Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bive here. So, in the star-crossed exotic mission, we were able to recover- <coughs> Ugh. Man, got something stuck in my throat for a second there. <laughs> well, you can hardly blame me for having a little bit of fun there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Guardians. My name is not Bife, as he's still resting and allowing his voice to recover. My name is Rendell Zevis. I'm a voice actor and audio editor who's known predominantly for work on the Guardians of Lore and Destiny Lore Audiophile podcasts, both of which you can find on iTunes, Spotify, or really just about any service you get podcasts from. That said, if you've been watching Bife's content for long enough, you might notice that this isn't my first time on the channel. I lent my vocal and editing talents to bring Yule, the Honest Worm, to life for Dynasty. I am Yule, the Honest Worm. It's an honor to have been involved in what is arguably the most ambitious fan project in Destiny's history, and I'm delighted to have been asked to come back again to fill in for the Lord Daddy himself. Now, because this lore covers what it does, I feel I need to make a point before we begin. There are those in the Destiny community who have jokingly referred to me as an Ahamkara, based on the sheer volume of voices that I am able to do. Drifter, Shax, Zavala, Saint, Osiris, Varix, all of these spring to mind. But I can assure you, my status as a wish dragon is a joke. After all, Bife would never let a being of such paracausal might cover for him. Oh, audience mine. <laughs> In the star-crossed exotic mission, we were able to recover one of Riven's eggs, and we learned about Terranus, Riven's mate. We ended up being his wish keeper, a promised guardian of the young that he and Riven had created. Our existence as Terranus' wishkeeper, his gift to us of the wishkeeper bow, and his willingness to sacrifice himself, are all a reflection of something unique. Despite the demands of his nature, and despite what all other wish dragons practiced, Terranus was a wish dragon who cared for those he bargained with. In the latest cutscene from the end of the Wishkeeper exotic mission, we see Riven stating just that. Terranus, unlike others, unlike me, cherished those who wished to him. Those who bargained with him were safe. It must have cost him. I found his restraint intriguing. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Terranus, what his unique brand of wish magic might have involved, and the implications for him personally. I also wanted to touch on something Riven stated, which implies that through Terranus's ways, there might be a new future for the Ahamkara, one that's less devastating to those that bargain with them, and that might lead the species toward nobler pursuits. Terranus' actions were unique amongst the Ahamkara, because unlike the others, he was not predatory in nature. Normally, the Ahamkara are metaphysical hunters, who feed by granting the wishes of those that bargain with them in a twisted manner. Doing so allows the Ahamkara to feed on the quantum chaos between reality as it is, and reality as the wisher desires. This process is naturally disadvantageous to those bargaining with the dragons, given that the wish dragons don't normally give exactly what is requested. They speak to our desires, but it's all done with the end of feeding themselves. It's perhaps apt to describe them as selfish creatures by nature, but I think I take the opinion of Lord Shax that it's simply in the nature of the Ahamkara. They cannot help who they are. 
predators hunt, fire burns, and ahamkara feed. If that is the case, then perhaps Terranus is the exception that proves the rule. According to Riven, those who bargained with Terranus were safe. Terranus cared for them, and he did not cause them harm when granting their wishes. Riven makes two assertions that paint this behavior in an even more remarkable light. Firstly, she states that all wishes come at a cost, which has been proven true on numerous occasions and by more dragons than just Riven. Secondly, she states that Terranus' bargains, which kept those that bargained with him safe, must have cost him. When presented with these statements, I'm inclined to believe that Riven knows her own nature and understands what is or isn't true about the Ahamkara. But even with that in mind, I have to ask whether those things are true. When we look back into the Queen's Foil censor, we see evidence that seemingly adds more context to what Riven is saying and gives us a better idea of what this cost is. In particular, we can see a few key sentences that describe the means by which Ahamkara feed. Take a listen. Wishes. A verbally expressed desire expressed within audible range of any Ahamkara. This wish is granted through invocation of something known as the Anthem Ananthema, which appears to be a manner of subjecting reality to one's will, similar to a light bearer's ability to affect paracausality. However, little is known about how this process unfolds in practice. Henceforth, the wisher ends into a binding contract with the Ahamkara, though many Ahamkara will purposefully manipulate or misinterpret the parameters of this contract to draw greater nourishment from it, often causing calamity to the wisher. This passage indicates that twisting the wish isn't specifically what grants nourishment to the Ahamkara. The act of granting the wish is what nourishes them. Twisting the wish simply draws a greater degree of nourishment from the wish, but this excerpt makes it seem like it's not necessary. A wish is enriched if it's twisted, but the twisting itself is not the source of its nourishment. Perhaps the cost that Riven is referring to is a sort of opportunity cost. Hypothetically, let's say that Terranus could have grown five times stronger if he twisted each wish he granted, but instead, he didn't so he's now only three times stronger. Something like that. Those numbers are, of course, arbitrary. We have no way of quantifying exactly how much power is actually gained from granting each wish. Regardless, this entire pattern of behavior and a better understanding of how the wish dragons use the Anthem and Anthema shows us that perhaps the Ahamkara do not need to follow their nature and twist their bargains. With that in mind, I think we need to keep an eye out in the lore for reasons why the Ahamkara might have originally been tempted to start doing this. While it's entirely possible that this is simply the best way for an Ahamkara to survive, I do wonder if there was something in their history that pushed them to this place of predation. Was there some moment, some Rubicon, that taught the Ahamkara that they could survive more easily if they acted with deceit. If so, perhaps their nature has been learned thanks to the course of history. Again, it is possible that I'm overthinking this and that the principle is best explained by the simplest idea of survival of the fittest. But the Ahamkara are a very storied aspect of destiny so it's not impossible that there is a more complicated explanation. There is also another possibility that one needs to contemplate. When one sits and thinks of an Ahamkara twisting someone's wish, the interpretation is always that the wish dragon will create terrible circumstances for the person wishing. 
But what if the Ahamkara could twist their wishes for good? Imagine for a second that oh-so-typical wish. I wish for wealth. Your desire may be to see more money at your disposal and to become rich. An Ahamkara might twist things so that you're suffocated by a mountain of coins. We've explained this possibility many a time on the channel. But what if instead, the Ahamkara twisted the wish to create something better for the wisher instead? When one wishes for wealth, perhaps they could then meet the love of their life and begin a fulfilling and prosperous life with them. Perhaps this person would also happen to become materially rich, thus granting both the original wish and twisting it into something better. I don't think that there's anything that specifically implies that the Ahamkara must be cruel in their bargains. It's clear that the Ahamkara feed from the difference between reality as is and reality as it is desired, and that twisting the wish broadens that source of nourishment. But I don't think there's any room for someone's wish to be expressly negative. Perhaps in this way, those that bargained with Terranus were saved from a worse fate. Perhaps in this way, future wishers could be saved if they should make wishes of Riven's children. But for a moment, it seems that this was a future that Riven witnessed. When Terranus invited her to his lair in the Black Garden, she had a momentary realization. Riven stated in the cutscene that my joy of turning desire to woe faded for one rapturous moment. This line of dialogue seems to imply that in Taranis, Riven saw an alternative to the status quo in which she existed. She didn't need to twist the wishes and desires of others. Once again, this seems to push that idea that the Ahamkara are not bound to cruelty in their bargain making. If nothing else, I think this is best reflected in the last few lines of the Wishkeeper Exotic Bow, where Terranus leaves a message to his offspring. He implores them, saying, Sing your own songs. Find those whom your wings would stretch out to shelter. When Terranus says this to his offspring, I think he might be referencing a line earlier in the lore tab. You will not hear our bones sing in dreams. You will not shelter under our wings. You will have to remember for yourselves. I think in this moment, Terranus is encouraging his offspring to follow his path as they discover more about themselves. To shelter others beneath their wings and to grant wishes that will keep their wishers safe. If this is the path that Riven's offspring follow, we might see the greatest fruit of Terranus's legacy. The rebirth of a species that might not be reviled and hunted for the danger they present but who might instead be cherished and protected for the wishes that they grant. If this is the future for the Ahamkara, and if Terranus has bought it for them with his sacrifice, I dare say that it will not have been in vain. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified when a new video goes up. It has been an honor and privilege to have been here, and I thank both you, the audience, and Bife for having me once again. My name has been Rindel Zevis, and to bring some of that magic back, Perodacia ad Astra. I'll see you, Starside.